Audi fans are a bit like Tesla fans. You can't say anything remotely negative about an Audi and get away with it. In fact, that comparison alone might upset them. And it's not like I'm gonna say anything bad in this video. The Audi that I'm driving here today is pretty awesome. However, there are some things that I'll say that might trigger Audi fans. So here's a quick joke to ease them into it. What do you call an Audi wearing a cowboy hat? Howdy, get it? Okay, that was a terrible, terrible joke. My name is Omar and this is the 2022 Audi S5 Sportback. It's time to get rowdy in an Audi. Okay, don't X out. That was the last one, I promise. All right, so personally, my favorite Audi is the A7, S7, RS7. I think they're the best looking in Audi's portfolio. Obviously, you also have the Audi R8, which I think looks really good. But after that, I'll have to go with the five Sportbacks because they're just a smaller version of the sevens. So let's get right to it. The Audi S5 Sportback that I'm testing here is powered by a three liter turbocharged V6, making a total of 349 horsepower and 369 pound-feet of torque. It's made into an eight-speed automatic transmission and it shifts pretty quick, pretty impressive. Zero to 60 comes in at 4.4 seconds. And this thing is pretty fun to drive. You can just keep pushing it and pushing it. And the power delivery is so seamless and so smooth. You can barely feel the gear changes and it sounds pretty good on the inside. How does it sound on the outside? Let's take a listen. Can I get a snap, crackle and pop? Oh, little bit, little one. Let's take a listen to the outside. <laughs> I really don't like this whole rev limiting business going on these days. Why am I limited after dropping so much money on a luxury sports sedan? I get that there are government regulations, but the government just needs to stay out of this. A little noise never hurt anybody. But yeah, as a daily driver, the S5 Sportback has a good amount of power and performance. It's actually pretty comfortable. Of course, it's way more comfortable than the RS5 Sportback. Not to say that the RS5 Sportback is a bad car by any means. That thing is an absolute beast with 444 horsepower It'll do zero to 60 like in 3.7 seconds. I originally was gonna test that a few months ago, but something happened with scheduling and I'll test that very soon. So check back soon for that one. So you have a few drive modes to pick from, including comfort, auto, dynamic, and individual. However, I did notice that in comfort and auto, the throttle response is barely there. It's really subdued. It just doesn't shift as quick as I would like it to. The downshifts are virtually non-existent. The throttle response is barely there. And I get it, these are your cruising modes but it just takes away from the experience of driving an S. If you're gonna buy an S5 Sportback, just drive it in dynamic or go through and set up your individual mode because in dynamic, it opens up quite a bit. And that's really because this isn't as exciting or engaging to drive as the BMW M440i Grand Coupe, its closest rival. The 440i Grand Coupe, in my opinion, is just a little bit sportier and quicker than the S5 Sportback. Both actually have an officially quoted zero to 60 time of 4.4 seconds. But we all know that BMW lies when it comes to their zero to 60 times. Their cars are always quicker than they really say they are. I personally hit zero to 60 in four seconds in the M440i Grand Coupe. Now, when it comes to handling, the S5 Sportback isn't bad. It'll take sharp turns and exit ramps pretty much like a champ. It's just that the 440i Grand Coupe is just a little bit more hungry. The S5 Sportback, on the other hand, acts like it can still perform, but just had a nicely sized lunch. Nonetheless, if it's comfort that you're looking for, I would definitely go for the S5 Sportback. This thing handles imperfections and bumps on the road much better than the competition. The BMW M440i Grand Coupe is a little bit more rough and just has a stiffer suspension. And of course, with the way the gas prices are going right now, let's talk fuel economy. The S5 Sportback will give you 21 miles per gallon city and 30 miles per gallon highway. The 440i Grand Coupe will give you 22 city and 29 highway, pretty similar for both. I'm averaging after a few days of driving a total of 22.8 miles a gallon. Not bad. By the way, one thing that I would love for Audi to change inside is the size of the steering wheel. It just feels a little too big for this. I don't know what it is. I feel like I'm driving a Q7 with the steering wheel. I would like this to be just a little bit smaller. Speaking of the inside, how do the two compare when it comes to everyday livability on the inside? Now these both are liftbacks, hatchbacks, or sportbacks, or whatever you want to call them. You even call it Grand Coupe. You can just name it whatever you want. The goal of these cars is to look like a sedan, but offer everyday usability. 
let's check it out. Hop in the second row of the S5 Sportback and you're working with 34.9 inches of legroom. I'm about six foot tall. That is my seating position. Not that bad, not that great. The 4 Series Grand Coupe will offer you 35.1 inches of legroom, so there's not that much difference. Cargo capacity wise, the Audi S5 Sportback starts you off with a very solid 21.8 cubic feet, which you can open up to 35 cubic feet with 40 20 40 split rear seats. There is a lot that you can fit back here. The 4 Series Grand Coupe starts you off with a smaller 16.6 .6 cubic feet behind the second row, but with the rear seats folded, it beats the A5 S5 Sportback with 45. 0.6 cubic feet. All right, let's talk looks, and there's not really much to talk about, but when it comes to the S5 Sportback and the M440i Grand Coupe, the S5 Sportback takes the crown for me. And it really doesn't have to do much with that giant beaver tooth grill on the 4 Series. Okay, who am I kidding? Maybe it has a little bit to do with it. But really, I think the Audi definitely looks sharper here. However, I do think that BMW is a bit more daring with their design language. They will challenge the norm and go totally crazy and try something totally different. I do think Audi needs something extra to spice things up a little bit. Yes, they'll do cool things like animated headlamps and animated taillights, but I think there is an opportunity for Audi to really switch things up. In my opinion, it's just getting a little difficult to really tell Audis apart with each new model year that they come out with. And no, Audi, don't get me wrong, I'm not asking for a giant awkwardly shaped grill or anything. I would just like to see something a little bit more daring when it comes to exterior design, and really, the same goes for the inside. Audi has one of the best interiors in the luxury segment when it comes to quality. They are very good at what they do. This is a very nice place to be overall. It's comfortable, it's simple, and it's really well put together. However, again, I would like to see something a little bit different. The 4s and the 5s have had the same interior for quite a while now with the single screen MMI infotainment system. You do have some cool tech like the virtual cockpit display and all that, but I would like them to try something to give this cabin a little bit more pizzazz, something to make it pop. And I'm not talking about that new tiny toggle shifter in the threes that you have, the A3, the S3, and the RS3. Something that would just make me feel good for dropping Audi kind of money. I just feel like the luxury segment is getting very competitive and with electric car brands adding innovative tech and style into their interiors, Audi could just use a little boost. That said, let's talk about the tech and all the cool stuff that you get in here. At the same time, let's break down the pricing details. All right, so pricing for the Audi 5 Sportback lineup starts at $43,900 for the A5 Sportback. The S5 Sportback will run you $55,300. And then the top of the line performance RS5 Sportback will set you back $76,200. As tested here, this S5 Sportback carries a final price tag of right under $66,000, but as standard, the base S5 Sportback Premium will give you matrix design LED headlamps that look really, really sharp. You also get LED taillights with sequential turn signals, which you also get in the front, and you get 19-inch wheels. My test model was supposed to have the 20-inch upgraded wheels, but we're riding on winter tires here, so they're smaller. On the inside, you get a combination of leather and Dynamica, which is like a suede material type on the seats. These seats are actually pretty comfortable and they are heated on the front as standard. You also get a three zone climate control, which is pretty impressive, along with a power panoramic sunroof. You also get a power tailgate as standard. Those three things as standard is pretty impressive to me. You get this carbon fiber trim right here, which actually looks really, really sharp, and aluminum door sills with an illuminated S logo. Tech-wise, as standard, you're working with a 10.1-inch touchscreen display with Apple CarPlay and Android Auto, and that's really it. Now, going for the mid-level Premium Plus will cost you $58,900, but it will add on the 12.3-inch digital Audi virtual cockpit display. It'll also give you a top-view camera. That's cool. You get a wireless charger, which is right here under the armrest, and it will add on adaptive cruise control along with active lane keep assist. Now, if I were to get an S5 Sportback, I would go for this trim right here, and I would also throw on the warm weather package for $550, which will give you full leather seats and cooled front seats. Now, if you want to ball out and get all the bells and whistles, you will have to go for the prestige trim at $63,700, and that will add on matrix LED headlights, but with laser lights. And this time you also get animated headlamps and taillights, which will do a cool motion when you lock and unlock your S5. You also get the MMI navigation with a six month free trial after which you will have to pay a subscription fee. You also get a heads up display, a really, really awesome Bang & Olufsen sound system that really slaps. It is really nice. It also adds on heated rear seats so the rear passengers can stay warm. You also get a heated steering wheel along with massaging seats, which aren't really that nice of a massage if you're looking to cure any back pains, but it's cool. And then you get a range of driver assist tech that includes a parking system plus with park assist so your Audi can automatically park itself. You just find a spot 
hit the park assist button and it'll park. Oh, and if you hate chrome or silver finish on the outside, definitely add the black optics package for $1,400 like my test model here. That will black out all the exterior trim along with the mirror housing so you can look a little cooler rather than just a bunch of chrome around there. And that package also adds on 20 inch upgraded wheels. Now, before I give you my final thoughts on the S5 Sportback, let me point out a few random important things that I love to show all of you. You have four cup holders, two in the front for the front passengers, and then you have two in the back for the rear passengers in the center armrest right there. Here are what the keys look like to the S5 Sportback. Nice little S logo, otherwise pretty simple and pretty nice. Door open and close sound from the outside and from the inside. Charging game wise, in the front you have a USB-A port right there in front of the cup holders along with a cigarette lighter charger right there. And then in the armrest you have a USB-C port and your wireless charger which is right there. Rear passengers get two USB-A ports, no USB-C ports and they get a cigarette lighter charger. Just remember, those USB-A ports are for charging purposes only. Don't do anything else with those USB-A ports. And of course, it is now time for an indicator and horn sound test here with the 2022 Audi S5 Sportback indicator first. It's an Audi indicator. Now for the horn sound. Let me just lower my window a little bit. Now for the horn sound. Oh man. That is powerful for sure. I like it. So yeah, the S5 Sportback is a pretty impressive luxury sports sedan. It's got a turbocharged V6 with very smooth power delivery. It's got a well-appointed interior and a grill that won't shock you every time you look at it. However, it isn't as engaging to drive as its closest rival and that may be what Audi is going for. I mean, not everybody out there likes cars that are aggressive all of the time. They don't want to feel like they're on the track racing somebody every single moment to drive. Nonetheless, I feel like the Audi 5 lineup as a whole can use some excitement when it comes to their exterior design, as well as some advanced tech and a refreshed interior. But yeah, until that happens, I feel like the S5 Sportback is just kind of there. It's a solid vehicle. It just doesn't increase my heart rate. Well, at least until I pop it into dynamic mode. Then it gets me going just a little bit. Either way, thanks for watching. Make sure you hit like, make sure you hit subscribe. Make sure you follow me on Instagram and on TikTok. My handle is at Omar Drives. I'll catch you guys in the next one. Take care. Peace. Gotta drive it in dynamic or set up your individual mode. Auto and comfort, you might as well just go for an A5.